I'm actually a local bartender in town and I've been doing some volunteer work through other organizations and just independently. And just working at the bar, you hear so many people come in and I'd heard about Andy who's kind of gotten this organization up and running with the help of some wonderful people. Being able to work with this organization has been just a true blessing to me and eye-opening experience for me because we're doing more than just taking in supplies. We're actually going and putting supplies in people's hands. I have been an outdoor guide in Western North Carolina for 11 years. Western North Carolina has such a magic. We really take care of each other. And even though I live in Caldwell County, I wasn't that affected and I have the resources to help give back. We couldn't get out of, ha or out of our neighborhood for a few days until we cut ourselves out. But um, the, uh, and we didn't have power for about a week, but all in all, we've got it a hundred times, million times better than some of those places up there. They were just wiped off the face of the map. I've been everywhere, everywhere in the mountains, every, the since, this, since we could get out of our house. Um, we've been making runs up and down the mountain. I don't want to say I did it. I, uh, I just started taking water and blankets to people. So um, everybody else, everybody else did, did this. I, it wasn't me. Most days we're making runs. We're able to get heaters to people, blankets to people, food to people, water, you know, those life-saving essentials that, you know, everybody needs that they haven't had access to. And unfortunately, in the more rural Appalachian areas, they're not, they're not receiving the help. I know some of the other bigger cities like Asheville and Boonar, that's more of what's being broadcasted and televised that all oh, Everyone's out here getting this help, everyone's out here getting the funding they need, and then you go in their backyard to, you know, people who have lived here and the generations that have lived here, and unfortunately it is a more poverty area. It's people that are okay with just living with what they've gotten off their land and they're happy with that, but those are the people who have not gotten the help. Impossible for me to grasp that the National, everybody's like the National Guard and FEMA are there to help, but who are they helping? Until yesterday, I have not run into them anywhere in the mountains that we've been, where we've been. Not, no sign of them. I'm not, I've not seen any federal um, aid whatsoever other than, and this is not federal, but I witnessed uh, Elon Musk choppers dropping Starlink. That's the only aid I've seen. Other than that, it's just been local people. or I mean, people from across the country, really, that, are, that have been um, you know, donating supplies or sending money or whatever whatever they can do, but um, as far as uh, uh, federal relief, there's been absolutely nothing. And they want people to fill out an application for $750 aid from a computer that they have no power to or a phone that doesn't work. So that's ridiculous. I'm from Caldwell County, and I think what a lot of people forget is Burke and Caldwell, we go up to the back of the mountains. All of those roads are destroyed and blocked off. Samson Mountain King Road blocked off. There's a whole village of people in the globe that they're having issues getting in and out. And it's people, it's the rednecks, it's us. It is the Appalachian people digging them out, delivering them food. Kind of the more rural areas of Beach Mountain, uh, Elk Park, Elk Hill. Um, uh, the devastation up there is just unbelievable. If you want to see some flood damage, go to Elk Hill. Um, 
it is just on freaking real. Um, there's in uh, by uh, By the Saturday before last, you didn't need cadaver dogs to locate bodies. Um, uh, it was, uh, my wife had nightmares for a week. The first thing that let me know I was in Irwin was the smell. It's the smell of the dead, whether it's animals or people, and it is people, because as it took my brain four days to process this, and I have spent so much time in Irwin. I have spent so much time in Irwin and it took my brain four days to process what I saw. And it was the only video I took while I've been out there. The river came and just, it went over the highway, but it took out a neighborhood of 80 homes. There was just 80 homes gone. I saw no national guards. I saw nothing there. The police are the only ones out there telling people and directing them where to go. Um, it was people of the community handing out Chick-fil-A to people. I actually had a man stop me yesterday and I was like, oh, like, hey, like, how are you? And he's like, oh, well, are y'all here to help dig graves? And asked if we would come up and help dig graves for them. I'm not politically affiliated at all. I'm, I'm just a person. I'm just a bartender. I'm just, you know, a Appalachian member. Like, that's all I am. But it's, I'm hearing it from anybody who's involved volunteering wise. I'm not just hearing it from people trying to push an agenda or people angry. People are angry because people can't get help. Uh, we did have helicopter, um, humanitarian helicopter relief efforts uh, or uh, sources that we could use until uh, yesterday. Uh, and they were all grounded due to phase two of whatever that is a FEMA's uh, plan. I don't know what phase one was. I guess it was just to let everybody do it them damn selves. We hadn't seen shit for eight up here. There was a woman yesterday that went out to go deliver food and she came across the shack and there was an old woman in there that hadn't been found. She had been surviving on one or two crackers a day, didn't have a telephone and just didn't really know what was going on. And unfortunately we have a lot of people like that that just didn't know what was going on and now the resources are running out and they can't get out of their home. And what happened here on September 27th, uh, I didn't see coming. <laughs> and I don't think anybody did really. But it's been through God's sin and the kindness of people far off <laughs> like you that my hope is renewed. And I am abundantly grateful for each and every person that has helped in any way in prayer or word or deed. foresee that two bridges were going to collapse and cause a 40-foot wave upstream, which took out both his houses and vehicles, took out all three of mine. But I have my life and I have my humble little home. But what happened is that I came and I walked around a little bit on the road with my dogs and I went back in and I thought, well, I'll get a shower, eat my breakfast, you know, like any other day. So when I came out of the bathroom though, the water that had been over here was a rushing torrent down the holler over there. My meadow was full, I couldn't go that way. I couldn't come this way. I saw a neighbor's roof going down the river and I knew something had happened. 
but I just tried to think really quick and I'm like, well, God, do I stay in here? Because I can't swim. So it was terrifying for me. So I went behind the camper and I held on to a wire fence till I got to the end. I had on these shoes. <laughs> I think I'm going to have them framed one day. <laughs> I tried to get up that bank. If you can see right there, it's really steep. Every time I would take three steps, I would slide back. And the water was getting higher. It was probably up to here by then. It had went under my cars, pulled my gas tank and flipped it over. And everything I would grab to hold on to gave way. And I mean, when something like that happens, it tests your faith. I said, God, I cried out loud because there was no one around. I said, God, save me for I cannot save myself. Whether supernaturally or by man, please save me. I don't want to die. In Jesus' name, amen. It seemed just like that. I'm sure it was maybe seconds. But a young man named Seth, he wasn't even supposed to be home. He was his 24th birthday when this happened. He walked to the water line, which was right past those hedges. And he looked at me and he goes, how am I going to get to you? And I said, don't go in the water. I said, there's a deer path in the woods. I said, get a rope. But meanwhile, the bridge that he would have crossed over, I still don't know how he got over that, was gone. And all there was a gush out that holler, that man's bridge, his driveway, everything was gone. So somehow, by God's grace, he got up through those woods, he came around, he threw the rope down. My hands by this time were like this. He had to put a rope tied around a log, and I was shaking, and there was so much water on the other side that I didn't want to go down. <laughs> I was a critical care RN uh, for over 17 years, and I, I knew it was like two minutes till midnight, you understand? <laughs> and so when the water finally went down, I did go down the hill, and that sweet veteran up there, 82 years old, made me a peanut butter fold over <laughs> and gave me a glass of milk. <laughs> It tasted like filet mignon, I believe. <laughs> That's my testimony, that God is faithful, and he did save me, and he did save my dwelling place. And then I was feeling, I don't mean to be negative, but I was feeling not helped <laughs> by certain people who are supposed to help us. Can I say it? Yeah. FEMA. <laughs> and uh, so I'm sorry, but I just... I just think when people are traumatized, it's not the time for red tape. It's the time to do what needs to be done. And so I'm not going to give another minute to that, but I thank God that you're here, and I thank you especially that you let me go along with you so that my life has purpose in the storm. So thank you. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Without the people here, not just specifically here, but without the people in our community helping, people are going to forget about the Appalachian Mountains. It's going to be a story swept under the rug because if we had this amount of effort on a larger scale with more people involved versus more people saying, I wish I could just do something. I wish there was something I could do. I can't find anything to do. There are things to do. This is a real mood of lifter here is people coming from all over and helping each other out the community helping people that have lost everything are still out there helping people are still out there doing for people in the ways that they can and that is truly inspiring I'm very proud to be part of this community yeah 
I don't know, I, I would say come see for yourselves because they're not showing you on the news, but uh, I, I know that's not possible. The areas are, you know, they're trying to get them up and running and they don't need any more traffic on the roads than there already is. But I wish somebody would get a chopper and get up there and give you footage of what it really looks like, in the, especially in the rural areas. Nobody, and they're not getting aid. They're doing it themselves. People who are having to camp right now are not prepared. Um, they've never had to camp before, or if they've done it, they've camped in the summer. They don't know how to winter camp, and winter camping is really rough. Your basic Walmart tent for just two people is around $65, which I know doesn't sound like a lot, but then they have to get minimum three tarps. They have to get sleeping bags. Food is just hard. People can't afford to run propane heaters because propane costs so much, and it's hard to find propane. Wood stove heaters are really needed for people right now, and that's also going to help dry out their houses. We're running out of money, we're running out of help, you know, people are getting exhausted, people are getting burnt out because of what they have seen. And we need long-term help. We need a long-term plan of what we're going to do because we can get buddy heaters out to people that may last them for right now or these blankets may be okay for right now. But here in two months, three months, they won't be okay. Like these people are going to need more than that to, to survive. I mean, those winters up there are harsh and Farmer's Almanac says it's going to be a cold winter and it's already showing it is going to be cold. They've already gotten snow up there. Whenever we went up there to help, there was snow on the ground. People were cold and the longevity of it, we do need, we do need people and there are ways to help. We want to start a project called Santa of the Appalachians and it's going to help keep Santa and the magic of Santa alive for the kids who are affected because they don't need to lose any more magic because we all have lost the magic of our home all together all at once and so just keep an eye out on that and when you see that help donate to our kids. We need help getting supplies we need donations so our volunteers can continue this so it's not just oh everyone has to go back to work we can't afford to do this anymore because that can't happen. The, I'm not saying that the government is not doing anything. You know, I'm sure they are, and I'm sure they're focusing on more uh, metropolitan uh, or urban areas. But in the rural areas, God knows when anybody will get to them. Uh, you know, we, we have to do it ourselves. Appalachia is such a beautiful place. Um, we have some of the oldest mountain ranges in the world. The French Broad is the third oldest river. Um, we were told growing up that our mountains protect us from tornadoes, earthquakes, and hurricanes. We live in a special place that is so old we are protected. We were not prepared for this. None of us could have been prepared. How could anybody who's landlocked be prepared for 25 feet swells of water coming at them? Well, the, the people that were affected by this, many of them, especially in the rural areas, are pretty damn resilient people. Uh, they're used to not having much, but they're not used to losing their houses and all their belongings and their families. So, um, I mean, the prayers couldn't hurt. I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice, have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, Thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. <laughs> Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. <laughs> Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. <laughs> Apple latching strong forever.